Christian. I am obviously the Ratchet Christian. So thank you for com coming back to my YouTube channel this week. Um, a few weeks ago, maybe like one or two weeks ago, I had did a topic on soul ties. So consider this to be soul ties part two, just because there's so much to say about that topic and I didn't really um, get to go over everything that I wanted to. So this is just a continuation of my first soul ties video. So let's start by going over the definition again. According to deliveranceministry.com, a soul tie is like a linkage in the soul realm between two people. It links their souls together, which can bring forth both beneficial results or negative results. And so in last week's video, I talked about good soul ties and bad soul ties. You can have both. And good soul ties were more so... Um, the good and godly soul ties that you have in your life with people that you love, people that you care about, the ones that support you, your best friends, your siblings, your mom and your dad, parents, the ones that you have with your children. You can have soul ties with your cousins, um, a good coworker that you love, a roommate that you know you're just extremely fond of. Anybody that you have a good and godly relationship with, nine out of ten times you have a good soul tie with them. You know, you think about them, you care about them, you you know your emotions are there when it comes to them and then you can also have bad soul ties with people that you're stuck in unforgiveness with whether it be family members that ratchet cousin that you just can't stand or you know somebody who used to be a best friend but they betrayed you an ex a ex fiance just anybody that you really have bad blood with and you haven't been able to get over it or forgive them nine out of ten times it's because you're still so soul tied to them and in the last video i explained that you know that's something that you need to pray about you need to bring their name up in prayer and just ask god to free you from the soul tie that you have made with them so that you can move forward in your life and so let me see last week we also talked about um sexually transmitted demons that was the term that i created yes you heard it here first on the ratchet christian because i believe that if you can catch something physically that you can't see some from somebody what makes you think that you can't catch something spiritually that you can't see from somebody you know a lot of times we think about oh that this person's family has a history of diabetes this person's family has a history of cancer so if you can hereditary pass down um, a disease, a physical disease through your bloodline, what makes you think that you can't hereditarily pass down a spiritual um, uh, entity as well? You know, who's to say that that spirit of anti-progress, that spirit of lack, that spirit of the women in your, mar in your family usually not getting married, you know, that spirit of poverty, you know, you come from a poor family and everybody in your family either suffers major financial issues or Say, for example, you have like a spirit of like, um, I don't even want to say a spirit of death because eventually we, we all die, but just a spirit of misfortune where somehow, some way, a majority of your people get in car accidents and pass away. Like, if that can also be passed down through your bloodline, just like how physical diseases can be passed down through your bloodlines. And so when we're making soul ties with people, we need to be cognizant of that. Like, who am I linking my soul to? This person might have a spirit of depression that runs in their family. This person might have a spirit of perversion that runs in their family. And as soon as you put your soul up to, to theirs and you guys lay down in bed together or not even that, it doesn't even take sex to make a soul tie, but as soon as you attach your soul to their soul, the demons that are in their life now have legal access to you. And the demons that are in your life now equally have access to them. So you can give somebody a sexually transmitted demon. You can pick up something from somebody that you did not have before. And my testimony is about that is I once dated somebody who had a lot of pride and it turned me into a bit of a prideful person. I never really struggled with pride before I dated this person, but you know, that's the demon that he had. And because I made a soul tie with him, that demon now had access to me to influence me and to kind of change my personality in a bit. And you know, I would consider myself to be pretty laid back, like pretty chill, not really like fancy or like picky about anything. Like if you wanna just go to a bar and kick it, have a kickback, no big deal. But you know, this guy was like, you know, like, I like nice things, this and this and that. So I kind of became started to be that way. And so when I would go out with my friends, I'm like, I don't want to go here. Like, I don't want to stay in line. I, don't, I want like bottle service. Da, da, da. One of my friends called me out like, since when are you like this? You're not that kind of girl, you know? She's like, that person, that guy that you're dating, like, that's how he acts. You know, that doesn't mean that you have to be that way. And I'm just like, true, call me out. 
but that's something that I hadn't um, struggled with before prior to being exposed to that spirit. And so that's something that I had to take to God in prayer. Like, God, like, I've become so prideful, you know, and I just pray that you'll set me free. And I also pray to, you know, to be set free from that soul tie. But that's a demon that I had to deal with that I had never dealt with before because I had paired my soul to somebody who struggled with pride. So that's just an example of um, a sexually transmitted demon. And um, last week we also talked about Zeta Grant's book. It's called Be Free From Marine Spirits. She's so awesome. I reached out to her like, I, I, I love your book. It's just done so much for me. You know, I just learned so much. And she actually DM'd me back. So I was like, oh, so excited. And she's just been so sweet. And her book is just so awesome and informative. And um, it talks more so about like spirit husband and things like that. And I will eventually talk about spirit husbands. But right now, we're just kind of building the foundation with soul ties. You know, we have to start somewhere and build up because the whole topic about spirit husbands, like you really have to be in position to receive the revelatory knowledge that's in this book. So for now, we'll just talk about the, the soul tie aspects of it until we get there. So in her book, um, she cites a scripture, which is 1 Corinthians 6, verses 15, 15 through 16, that says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot in one, is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. So right there, the Lord is saying, like, do you not know that if you lay down with the prostitute, if you join yourself with a prostitute, do you not know that you make yourself one flesh with that prostitute? By sleeping with her, you guys' soul has become one. You are knit to her. You are her spiritual spouse in the spiritual realm. You two are as one. Do you not know that? And then he also goes on to say, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So if you can lay down with a prostitute and become one spirit with her, you also have that option of becoming one spirit with the Lord. You know, you, you can become one spirit with the Holy Spirit as well. It's just kind of like, which entity are you trying to become one spirit with? Because there are demons that are trying to become one with you. But, you know, the Holy Spirit is trying just as hard, you know, to be one spirit with you as well. And it's up to you what it is that you're going to allow to have access to you. And then the author went on to write, By understanding who you are spiritually joined with, you have the first important weapon in either making the change or strengthening your spirit man. And that is so powerful because it's like, by now you can kind of see, like, whose soul am I linked to? Like, who, you know, may have brought something in my life that I didn't have to deal with before, you know? It's kind of like peer pressure, getting in with the wrong crowd, being around the wrong people. They start to rub off on you. You are like, there's like this saying, like, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Tell me who you surround yourself with and I'll know exactly how, what kind of person that you are or what kind of person you are going to eventually be. Because the spirits that are in those people are influencing you just like your spirits are influencing them. So it's just being mindful of paying attention to which type of spirits that you're around, what type of spirits that you're letting into your life. So, um, to go from there, let me see, to elaborate, did I mention the uh, mm, signs of a soul tie? Yeah, so the signs of a soul tie, just to like continue to explain it, it's like a soul tie is your mind, your will, and your emotion, where you're thinking about them, your mind, your will, you're doing things, which is actions, and your emotions, where it's like they can get an emotional rise out of you. And nine out of ten times, like our partners, that people that we date are we are heavily soul tied to and they can get us to react and do things that we don't want to do but i was just reading because i'm like god like give me some more scriptures about this let me understand it more and i just came across this scripture just like a couple of hours ago and it says there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love and I just thought that was so amazing because when I was dealing with the soul tie I was trying to get rid of, I was so tormented, you know, so tormented as in not being able to forgive that person where he was the first thing that I thought about when I woke up, the last thing I thought about when I went to bed, all throughout work, I'm thinking about it. Literally, it's just like, like a, it consumes you. It's like an obsession. It's almost like you're being tormented. And it's like, that's not love. If you're so infatuated with this person that if they don't text you back or ruins your day that if you don't hear from them you just kind of like lose your mind or love have no torment if you love somebody you're not going to feel tormented about it you're going to have peace about it you know so if you have a soul tie with somebody it's like we're in love well not if you're 
feeling tormented you're not that's not love that is completely something else that you need to pray about so that scripture I, I feel like relates in some ways but it just stuck out to me and I'm like oh this is tight so I'm gonna use it um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Let's see. so yeah so through unforgiveness that's how you can also be tormented if somebody did something to you you not forgiving them keeps you linked to them you know the best way the best thing to do is just forgive them and like move forward with your life and um, what else did I want to say about that well those are basically like the end of my notes but I just wanted to kind of finish out by saying like just seek to make godly soul ties ladies and gents you know as women let's seek to make good soul ties with good people let's be more selective about the guys that we date like don't date somebody who you who thinks like the way to make a woman happy is by buying you like Victoria's Secret sweats and giving you chicken nuggets like you got to level up a bit you know let's seek to make godly soul ties with men who can lead us spiritually men who are submitted to God and men who can actually pray for you when was the last time you actually dated somebody who could like really pray for you like think about it you know date a guy who when you text him you know I'm having a bad day they can just be like let's pray about it you know not like oh why don't you come through you know we're gonna roll up I'm gonna pour you up a cup and you know everything's gonna be okay like no and as fellas for you too like make sure you're making good and godly soul ties with good women who don't just want you for the things that you have or what it is that you can do for them you know don't pair yourself up with a girl who when you text her hey I'm having a bad day all this is going on in my life the only way she can think to make you feel better is by doing something sexual because after y'all done eating on each other what's left after y'all ate up on each other and did this and did that you're just as spiritually bound as you were before if not even more you know get you a girl that can oh you've had a bad day let's pray about it baby you need a job you know they're giving you a hard time at um at the office you know what let's go on a fast you know get you somebody who can rain bombs over Baghdad on the kingdom of darkness like okay Satan I see you messing with my man you know trying to bring on that heavy spirit of depression but I rebuke you in the name of Jesus will come against you will holy ghost fire and every weapon that you have formed against this man's life shall not prosper like get you one of them ladies get you one of them too get you one of those baby like I got you like you know what we're going on a fast let's go to this conference let's you know join hand in hand because if any two come together the Lord will be in their midst I'm not gonna let Satan come up here and play with you I'm not playing with him you know so just be selective just be mindful of the people that are making good soul ties with let's make sure we're making good soul ties they're gonna do good things for us and so I hope this video made sense I know I'm kind of like rambling but it was just I, I just feel like it needed a part two and hopefully you'll watch both so if you put them together they'll make sense and then do your own research there are pastors out there who talk about soul ties way better than I just did you know let this be a starting point for you like how I said in the last video go on YouTube and search TD Jakes on soul ties pastor Paula White on YouTube she talks about soul ties there's a lady who has a channel called anointed fire she talks about soul ties pastor Kevin L.A. Ewing he talks about soul ties there's tons of pastors out there who can talk about soul ties in a way better way than I just did so just let this be a seed for you to take and run with so that you can really grow in this area of your life so thanks guys for tuning in I pray that you learn something and I pray that it will bear fruit in your life and I just pray that you will get free in Jesus Christ's name, amen.